Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Have we got a surprise for you? Stay tuned. So we just recently bought this 2014 Kia Sorento and we got a little bit of a bargain on it simply because it was dirty. Take a look at this. This thing looks like kids have been living in it for quite a while. So we literally had to take all the seats out just so that we could get into the tracks and uh, into the nooks and crannies. This is gross. And if any of you guys join the Rust Belt live feed on Sunday night, they were talking about customers' dirty vehicles. And of course we bought this one this way. And the question is, is how do you, how do you handle customers when their vehicles come in and they're so dirty and messy and smelly in some cases that it's hard to send them out back and get your mechanic to work on them. I mean, he doesn't want to be sticking his head in there any more than, than I want to. But anyways, just wanted to see what your guys' thoughts were on how do you handle customers with really bad vehicles, really smelly vehicles. But we've got Junior on it and uh, he's uh, already working away at it. He's got underneath the hood all shampooed. Looks as good as new. So anyways, he'll get in here, he'll get this all pre-treated and shampooed, and by the time he's all said and done, it will look just like new. So, not every vehicle we buy at the auction is uh, in really, really good or clean condition. Sometimes we've got to work at it to get there. Okay guys, do you remember the red Kia Soul that's behind me that Bubbles was actually traded in on. Well, they called today and they said they had a radiator leak. So uh, they dropped it off today for an appointment first thing tomorrow morning, but we got it in a little bit earlier to take a look at it, see what was going on. And she got a hole in the radiator. Looks like it probably caught a rock or something like that. But she's spitting right out the bottom. So unfortunately, a broken part as opposed to a failed part is not covered under warranty but we're going to use these customers really well and give them a really good price on a secondhand radiator and that secondhand radiator has uh going to be about four or five days away it's going to cost a couple hundred bucks and uh then we'll get it swapped out for them so sometimes even though you've got some warranty it doesn't help the situation when things like you catch a rock with your radiator or a windshield or a bad you know flat tire or something like that but She's looking pretty sad now with some uh, bleeding, some coolant. So I want to go back and talk a little bit about a live stream that I was on last night at uh, Rust Belt Mechanic. And another topic of discussion that came up other than having to deal with dirty vehicles is when you tell a customer that their vehicle is too dirty that you don't want to work on it or you suggest to them that you know what we're not going to work on it until you clean it out or whatever that topic of conversation is you also have to deal with the repercussions of that conversation so no no matter how gently you've put that to your customer no matter how loyal that customer has been to you in the past and no matter how much you have bent over backwards for that customer in the past, if the customer does happen to get upset, you lose the customer as a valuable part of your business. And we've seen that in the past that over a over something totally out of your control you lose a customer so in that particular instance you know like I said before nobody wants to work on a vehicle that is that filthy and smelly and grimy that 
we, you know, that we don't even want to bring it into our shop. So how do you tell a customer that? Put your comments in the comment section below and tell me how would you handle that? What is the right way to handle that to try and salvage a relationship with that customer? I mean, obviously with us in the used car business, these customers buy vehicles from us. And at some point in time, we are going to have to take that vehicle on trade. Do we want it? Um, you know, are you going to insult them when you don't give them anything for it on trade? Because of the condition of the interior. So, it, it, was a, it was a very long topic of discussion. The other thing that came out of that was when a customer gets upset with you, you know, 20 years ago, a customer would get upset with you and they would go out into the public and they would tell two or three people just how upset they were with your service or with what happened. But today, the court of public opinion is much larger than what it was 20 years ago. Why? Because we have social media. And social media, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, can wreak havoc on a business. We've been there. We've done that. And we know. We also know that what gets told in those stories isn't always the truth. People will tell you all the time that when it comes to the truth, there's three sides to every story. There's your side, there's their side, and somewhere in the middle is the 100% truth. So guys, all you can do when it comes down to having to deal with customers, and, and we at our shop deal with this on a daily basis, is treat every customer the way you want to be treated. You're not gonna please everybody, you're not gonna satisfy everybody, and every decision you make is not always going to be the right one but if you're running an honest business and you're doing things right by people then you will reap those benefits and you know an old passage of the Bible says you reap what you sow so it's doesn't matter what you're doing in life if you treat people bad then you know bad things will happen to you if you're going to treat people good and uh, give them deals where you can and you know Maybe not charge them for the full hour of time that you've worked on their car or whatever the deal is. As long as you're looking after people, they will look after you. So we try and treat every customer uh, the same way. And when somebody comes in and they're real ecstatic about the way they've been treated, uh, you know, it's great that they're ecstatic and it's great that they feel about that way. But you know what? We treat everyone the same way, or at least we try. We know who those people are that we cannot please. So. I don't know where this whole video is going to lie within the schedule of videos. Uh, it's just something that I felt that I wanted to record and having all that information pop up in the live stream the other night uh, was just something that I wanted to bring to light to you that simply this, if there's a lesson to be learned out of all of this, is when you have a good experience somewhere, whether it be at the drive through or at the furniture store or at the auto parts store, if you have a good experience use social media for good because we don't always get that thank you guys for watching thank you for staying such loyal fans of this channel i don't know when i'm going to post this video it might be this week it might be next it might be a month from now regardless we are growing like crazy and it's thanks to guys and gals like you who choose to watch my videos T-shirts and hoodies are always for sale at the first link in the description box below, guys. I really would appreciate it if you guys could go there and just support my channel in one more way by wearing that old car auto guy swag everywhere you go and let people know who I am and what I'm all about. Guys, thank you so much. I can't say it enough. I end every video on a positive message and you always know what it is. It's stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. Guys, I love you so much. God bless, and we'll see you in the next upload. Stop it, stop it.